Hey guys, this is the lecture that goes along with your farm chapter 34, and this is all about anti-hyperlipidemic meds. That's a mouthful. So in other words, anti against hyperlipidemic. So in other words, when lipid levels are elevated, how do we get them down? What are lipids? Lipids are fats. So basically we're talking about meds that lower cholesterol. Okay, so let's get started. Um, the must-know meds for this chapter are a group of drugs called statins, and some examples are torvastatin, simvastatin, niacin, which is just vitamin B3, and then there's one other one called gemfibrozil, which is a fibrate. So first, before I talk about the meds, let me give you a little background about lipids and cholesterol so that you kind of understand, you know, what you need to know. And so when we talk about lipids and cholesterol, um, you have a total cholesterol level in your body. In other words, cholesterol is kind of like a type of fat that can build up in the bloodstream and there's some of it that's very good for you, but then there's some of it that's very bad that can actually line your arteries like we talked about before. So if you fry up some bacon in a pan and then you let that grease just sit there, what happens? It kind of coagulates almost, right? Gets hard, it happens inside your arteries. So when you're looking at lab results, you're looking at a total cholesterol level, and then you're looking at LDL and HDL. LDL stands for low density lipoprotein. That is the bad cholesterol. And the number you wanna focus on less than 100, that is desirable. Because when LDL is elevated above that 100, then you have atherosclerotic plaque that will form in the arteries, and it just definitely increases the risk for heart disease. And then you have your HDL, or your high-density lipoprotein. H stands for healthy. So the HDL is the good cholesterol. That's the one that you want. The higher, the better. And the number you're looking for, magic number is 60 or higher, because that cholesterol actually pulls the bad fat from the cells and transports it to the liver. Right, so in other words, it, it doesn't line those, those arteries, and it's good. So when we talk about cholesterol meds, we're talking about what the book likes to call HMG-CoA reductase inhibitors. Don't worry about that. Statins, just remember, statins, okay? Fibric acid derivatives, gemfibrozil. And then niacin is just niacin. It's just a B vitamin, but it's a B vitamin, vitamin B3 specifically that has anti-lipemic properties. In other words, it's anti-fat, okay? It's pretty easy to understand. So first we'll talk about statins. So statins, you know, what is the action of them? I'm gonna go over this very quickly because you're not gonna be a pharmacist, I don't think. You're gonna be a nurse. So just so you understand, statins, what they do is they stop the production of cholesterol or they promote the breakdown of cholesterol, okay? Because your body, will make some cholesterol on its own as well. Um, these statin drugs will lower blood levels of cholesterol and triglycerides. And triglycerides are another type of fat that can build up in the bloodstream. And the magic number for triglycerides, under 100 also. And statin drugs can actually help the HDL, the good cholesterol, be elevated, which is what you want, right? Okay. And so when we use these, these statin drugs, we, we don't just give a drug and say, here, if you take this, you can eat whatever you want. No, it doesn't work that way. So patients are supposed to watch their diet. They're supposed to stay away from trans fats, which are the, the animal fats. Anything that is, is, is hardened like that grease we talked about in the pan or anything that becomes kind of liquefied at room temperature. So think about a stick of butter. If you leave a stick of butter out at room temperature, what's going to happen? It melts, right? Those are the bad fats. And so we need to make sure that their diet is appropriate and we give them the statin to help along with diet, adjunct, okay? Adjunct with diet. And it will prevent coronary, coronary events like a heart attack because it prevents coronary artery disease and other cardiovascular events, right? So you don't want high cholesterol. When we talk about adverse reactions, this is the one you need to know. Okay, the one you need to know is with all statins, the patient has the risk of developing rhabdomyolysis. 
Rhabdomyolysis is a potentially fatal breakdown of muscle tissue, okay, that, that can cause renal failure and death. And so one of the first signs of rhabdomyolysis is a new or sudden onset of muscle cramping or muscle pain. So in other words, your patient just got a prescription for a statin drug. You're going to instruct them, listen, you start taking this medication, make sure that if you get a new onset of Charlie horses that wake you up, you know, you start getting muscle cramps or something like that, stop the drug, call the provider. Stop the drug, call the provider. It's important to remember, okay? Um, you should never give statins in anybody that has any serious liver disorders because statin drugs particularly work on the liver. So if they have liver cancer, cirrhosis of the liver, any of the hepatitis is, 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 right? If they are an alcoholic or they drink on a regular basis, they should not be getting a statin drug. And if you're pregnant or breastfeeding, no statins for you, okay? When we talk about drug-drug interactions with statins, just know that the mycins, erythromycin and chlorithromycin, um, if that's if those are antibiotics, will increase the patient, patient's risk of severe myopathy. And myopathy is that breakdown of muscle. Um, amiodarone, which we haven't gotten to yet, but that's a cardiac med, and niacin, if taken with a statin, can increase the risk for myopathy and rhabdomyolysis. And warfarin, the queen mother of the anticoagulants, if they're taking a statin with warfarin, they can have an increased anticoagulant effect. So in other words, they would be a risk for bleeding, okay? And just a couple fun facts, it should be taken at bedtime. Statins should be taken at bedtime, that's when they're best absorbed, and they should not be taken with grapefruit juice, okay? So make sure you remember that. Uh, the next one, the fibric acid derivatives, Gem Fibrozil, okay? This one helps the body excrete cholesterol through the feces. So in other words, it'll help you poop out the extra cholesterol. It also reduces production of fat in the liver. And when it does all that, it lowers the serum blood levels of, of the lipids, okay? But adverse reactions. Um, a lot of GI problems, GI upset, diarrhea, nausea, vomiting. But the other two things, cholelithiasis, cholecystitis. Coley, C-H-O-L-E. We are referring to the gallbladder. Make sure you know that. C-H-O-L-E is the gallbladder. Coley lithiasis, stones in the gallbladder. Coley cystitis, inflammation or infection of the gallbladder. So gem fibrosil can cause those, those problems. Um, with gem fibrosil, you want to make sure that you are checking liver function tests, okay? Uh, before you give it. So AST and ALT. Um, next on the list is your niacin, vitamin B3. And yes, it lowers lipids in the blood. And again, for people that have really high serum cholesterol levels or triglyceride levels, we can give them niacin as an adjunct also, in addition to. But the big thing with niacin, most people will experience, after they take it, this weird generalized flushing. They will get They'll feel like they're on fire, right? From the bottom of their feet to the top of their head. And it's an easy fix. You instruct the patient to take one adult strength aspirin, that's 325 milligrams, 30 minutes before they take the niacin and they will not experience that flushing, okay? Niacin is contraindicated to anybody that's got certain peptic ulcer diseases. So ulcers that are in the stomach or the intestines. Anybody that's got liver problems, again, hepatic dysfunction means liver problems. They should not receive niacin. And anybody that's had any issues with spontaneous arterial bleeding, so problems with bleeding, they should not get niacin, okay? With all of these meds, you're always going to do a pre-administration assessment. What is their history? What is their dietary history? What are their vital signs? What is their weight? And you're going to be looking at them and you're going to be looking particularly at their eyelids and at their skin for xanthomas. Xanthomas or xanthalasma, that's a mouthful, are little yellow, hard kind of spots either on the eyelids or kind of under the eye. It's fat, cholesterol, that it's, their cholesterol is so high, it's seeping through the skin and the skin on the eyelid is super thin so it's easy for it to seep through and accumulate. 
That means that their cholesterol is super high. And then ongoing assessments, and this holds true for all the meds we talked about, whether they're statins, whether it's niacin, whether it's gemfibrozil, you must always continually monitor liver function, AST and ALT. Make sure they are within normal limits. And then, is the drug working? You're going to be monitoring their blood cholesterol and triglyceride levels on a regular basis. That just makes sense, right? You got some nursing diagnoses in there. And, you know, when we talk about expected outcomes, is the drug doing what we want the drug to do? So, in other words, are their triglycerides, their total cholesterol, and their LDL lower than they were before they started the drug? And has their HDL, good cholesterol, increased, right? And make sure that they understand what the adverse effects are and make sure they understand that it's not a magic pill, right? The jack that had the beanstalk beans um, did not give us these meds. So they need to adjust their diet in addition to taking the medication, okay? So, you know, we want to make sure that they understand when they take the drug, how they take the drug. If they're having issues with constipation, it's always increased fluid, increased dietary fiber, and move. Get a little exercise. It'll do you good. And then I already talked about the rhabdomyolysis. So make sure they understand any unexplained new muscle cramping, muscle weakness, muscle tenderness, muscle pain. And especially if they develop a slight temperature and start feeling general malaise. In other words, oh, I feel like maybe I could have the flu. Stop the drug. Call the doctor. Okay? Can't say that enough. They have to call the doctor as soon as those things start because they can really be fatal. All right? That's it for this lecture. I'll see you with the next chapter. Okay? Bye.